So in the, in the session uh, where we'll cover the mechanisms uh, associated with uh, Parkinson's disease, we'll uh, cover mitochondrial dysfunction. This has been already uh, um, on, on the, 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 the spotlight for a long time. Uh, we've known that mitochondrial dysfunction can lead to uh, Parkinsonism. And this is known uh, by, by uh, the work of many uh, people in the field showing that toxins that interfere with mitochondrial function lead to Parkinsonism. So uh, there's always a great interest in understanding how mitochondrial biology, how interfering mitochondrial biology uh, leads to uh, alterations in the cell that eventually cause uh, cell loss. And we'll cover that and we'll cover also um, uh, the, the alterations in lipid metabolism. This is a concept that is emerging. Um, Parkinson's has been considered and, and many of these disorders, uh, proteinopathies. And now we know that lipids are changed in, uh, at the cellular level and uh, uh, also at the, at the physiological level in, in the organism. And so um, we will try to, to get some information about what is the research being done uh, at the level of uh, lipid biology that may give us clues for what, uh, what is going wrong uh, during the disease. And finally, we'll also have a, a presentation on lysosomal uh, dysfunction. Lysosomes are the, the subcellular compartments where aggregated proteins are thought to be degraded. And because there's protein aggregation, we, we still don't know for sure if protein aggregation is causing problems or is a consequence of something that is going on. But for sure, we, uh, we, we, I think we all agree that it would be important to consider this strategy as a possible strategy for intervention if we are to uh, be able to try to clear protein aggregates from the cell. Of course, it's important to keep in mind, as some colleagues in the field are pointing out, that uh, protein aggregation per se may not be the causal uh, factor. But maybe what's happening also is that because proteins are aggregating, we're losing the normal function of these proteins. So this is an overall concept that, although it's not uh, covered specifically in this session, but it's a concept that we need to keep in mind because uh, the data suggesting that there is loss of function because of maybe uh, protein aggregation is something that uh, we need to, to keep in mind. Understanding the molecular mechanisms involved in disease is really important because uh, from what we know so far, all the trials that we've had unfortunately didn't work. And I think that there are many possible reasons for that. Um, wrong doses of the molecules, wrong molecules, uh, uh, wrong patients, uh, uh, wrong animal models. But I think overall, the lesson we should learn from all of this is that we need to understand the biology of the disease uh, at a level that we still don't understand today. And so this understanding all these mechanisms will bring us one step closer to understanding the biology. And with that, we'll be one step closer to being better positioned to develop therapies that work.